Hello, and welcome to another Executive Spotlight Q&A podcast. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading, and this is Light Reading's sponsored podcast series that covers the people, technology, and companies that are pushing the industry forward. Today, I'm talking to Rob Shore from Infinera. Rob Shore is the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Infinera's global marketing organization, and Infinera has a lot to say about manufacturing, about optics inside the data center, about bandwidth outside the data center, the challenges that service providers are facing, and where the industry is going with the advent of AI uh, just around the corner. Uh, so here is the Executive Spotlight Q&A with Rob Shore, and this was recorded in San Diego on the show floor of OFC 2024. And uh, Rob Shore, thanks so much for uh, being part of the uh, Executive Spotlight Q&A podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I always enjoy doing podcasts with you. Thanks so much. And it's uh, let's start the discussion at the high level. So talking about some of the macro trends that are influencing um, network operators, uh, you know, what are, what are some of the things that, that they're facing right now in terms of uh, bandwidth drivers and, uh, uh, you know, kind of what's consuming capacity? That's a great question. I mean, obviously, the one thing one can always count on in life, right? Uh, death, taxes, and bandwidth growth. Right. right. So bandwidth <laughs> will always continue to grow. People find new applications, streaming videos, uh, TikTok, you name it. Uh, and that bandwidth continues to grow between 20 and 30% a year like it always has. Uh, so one of the big challenges network operators continue to face, as they always have, is how do they increase the capacity of their network while driving down the cost per bit and power of the grid. So that's something the industry has struggled with for a long time. And of course, we continually innovate technologies to help, to help them achieve those objectives. But one of the key trends that are driving the industry right now, and everybody's talking about it everywhere they go, is artificial intelligence. And Initially, we're seeing a tremendous amount of capacity increase inside the data centers as they build these AI clusters. The amount of capacity is 10 to 20 times what we're used to. Mm -hmm. Now, that starts inside the data center, but as they continue to expand these clusters, um, it's starting to spill outside the data center and data center interconnect. And one of the key things driving that um, is just the size of individual data center you can build, and it's mostly limited by power. So these data centers are connected to a power grid associated with a city, and there's a finite amount of that that they can provide, that that city can provide. So what they're finding they have to do, they, the data center operators, is actually geographically distribute their data centers into different power grids. It's not about hitting this city or that city, it's about which power grid nearby can provide enough capacity for me. Wow. Um, and what that's starting to do, and they're just starting to build this as they build out these generative AI clusters, um, it, it expand those, they're having to build more data centers to support it and having to put those in different uh, power grids. And hence, now you need that amount of incremental capacity between those data centers. So that inside the data center AI application capacity growth is just now starting to spill outside the data center. And it's a big challenge that network operators are looking at how do I accommodate that mm -hmm. um, and keep my costs and power down. Makes sense. In the inside the data center, um, you know, we're, we're driving higher capacity and lower power. Um, how how far can we push that at, at the moment? Because that it seems like we're running up against some theoretical or physical uh, limitations. Well, from a capacity per fiber perspective, sure, there's always Shannon to uh, to <laughs> looming over us. So it's kind of already hit us on the outside the data center stuff. Inside the data center, it's a little bit less of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, because you can add more fibers. Okay. You know, it's hard to add fibers over to, you know, four or 5,000 kilometers. Certainly subsea, it's difficult to add fibers. So it's really important to try to get as much capacity per fiber as you can. Inside the data center, it's not that hard to put multiple parallel fibers in place. You still want to maximize it, um, but it's it's a little bit less critical. Uh, that so I don't think we're running into capacity issues inside. It's mostly individual links mm -hmm. uh, and being able to connect these at super high speeds. But most importantly is driving the power down. You know, this is why when you go those longer distances, you're seeing this concept of like LPO, these linear pluggable optics, mm -hmm. but yeah, longer but distances, but remove the DSP. You know, PAM4 works pretty well. It's a good low cost solution for going reasonable distance, but it's got that DSP okay. attached to it. It's not even so much about the cost, it's about the power to run a DSP. So everybody's looking for ways to drive down power. Last thing an AI vendor wants to, to consume power with is the optics. They want to save all the power for the processor. So, Really, the focus on the next generations is going to be how do I get that distance with the absolute lowest power per bit I possibly can get to. Okay, and um, you know, let's talk about how these larger trends influence Infinera. You know, what it decides to build, what it invests in. Um, 
I, I, you know, you've already mentioned it, but let's, you know, talk about this investment in U.S.-based uh, semiconductor manufacturing and packaging. Um, how is that putting Infinera at an advantage as we see all these things sort of uh, coming to market? Yeah, I mean, uh, from an investment perspective, obviously ICE-D, which we announced, I think there's a big opportunity for really indium phosphide-based uh, photonic integrated circuit manufacturers mm -hmm. to be able to address some of these higher performance, higher baud rate, low power solutions inside the data center. But outside the data center, the worlds are changing as well because, um, you know, this is inter-facility connectivity. We are reaching Shannon's limit. The amount of return on investment you get for high performance embedded optics is diminishing. Still there, so you're still going to get incremental benefits. Uh, right. But we need to start looking at more ways to uh, get more capacity out of these networks. One of the key things that we're investing in is expanding the highway, right? You look at the highways, the C-band, right? The, the amount of spectrum you have to use. Um, for years, we've been focused on making bigger cars, so we're putting more traffic per lane. Uh, Shannon puts an upper bound on how much traffic you can get per lane on the highway, um, and now it's time to go back to look at expanding the highway. That's what we're doing with Super C. So our Super C implementation essentially adds about 27% more usable spectrum, enabling network operators to get more value out of their fiber investments. You couple that with the latest generation of engines, our 1.2 terabit i7 optical engine and you're looking getting about uh 37 more capacity than this current generation for fiber and about 25 percent more than what anybody else can do in the standard c so key areas pushing investment for us and how we're trying to help network operators overcome some of these key challenges okay and um what do you see as some of the opportunities for uh, optical technology innovators like in Panera? Like what's, what's uh, uh, I guess, standing out in terms of applications and, and big markets that are kind of ahead of you? And then maybe um, if you want to address uh, what's happening with the bandwidth race in the U.S. and the government stimulus, that could, that could be uh, interesting yeah. as well. Yeah, it's great. You'd asked that question before about what's the benefit of having U.S.-based fab uh, facility yeah. here where we do our interphosphite and the advanced packaging in Pennsylvania. Um, two big benefits. Uh, obviously, there's governments getting involved to try to help stimulate investments in those things. And the fact we not only have it here, but we have for you know 25 years. We never left. We're very dedicated. Um, they look at that favorably. Um, so there could be some opportunities to work with the government on that. But there's also a lot of customers, uh, network operators, that like not only the security, network security, of having technology that's grown in the U.S., but also the supply chain security. Where COVID taught us one thing, it's that you know, it's having a secure supply chain, you know, not from a you know, uh, espionage type thing, but secure, like having control over your supply chain makes a huge difference in their ability to continue to grow their network. And having most of our facilities and most of the resources here in the United States helps us to more reliably uh, deliver technology to our customers. So that's one big thing. One of the big technology aspects that's, that's really interesting for us is what we do inside the Indian phosphide in that photonic integrated circuit. Okay. Our whole premise as a company has been really leveraging indium phosphide, leveraging what you can do. These widely tunable lasers have to be indium phosphide. Every single person in the industry that does a long distance transmission laser uses indium phosphide lasers. Almost all of them, they'll have to have all these other components, the modulators, the um, the semiconductor amplifiers, the external application. They have to do those as other components and other materials, and then they have to glue them all together. There's pluses and minuses to each one, but the big minus to that is physical size and power requirements of operating that device. Right. In fact, we can do all of that in a single photonic integrated circuit in this era where people are interested in small and low power uh, and we can still yet transmit at high signal rates, high baud rates, with a high output power from the uh, from the optical signal. Um, it, it's really there's a really significantly growing market for that. We're seeing that both in developing high performance pluggables, coherent pluggables for inter facility connectivity, and now increasingly intra data center opportunities as well. And the same technology, you know, that benefits you too because it's basically the same technology being used for multiple applications. So you're not having to reinvent the wheel each each time you have a market. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's interesting. We call as a guy, my team got Tim Dwyer, and I'll give him credit. He, he invented this term, the virtuous investment cycle. Right. And we're already <laughs> seeing that between the high end embedded optical engines and these pluggable optical engines. And you can learn and integrate technology from one to the next. So this latest generation of 800 gig pluggables that we've just released, and we announced some, some big contracts we've got secured on that, 
What that does and why that's popular is because we integrated all of the a lot of the ICE six technology, all the signal processing and algorithms and probabilistic constellation, and we integrate that into the pluggable. So you now have a and of course ICE six use seven nanometer technology, and the eight hundred gig pluggable uses three nanometer technology. So similar number of transistors um, on the. Uh, uh, on the but so we're able to get this kind of more high end long haul performance in a pluggable. Okay. Then similarly on the other end, when we went back to do I7, right, the successor, I want put we leveraged a lot of because what you have to do in a pluggable, it's all about efficiency, simplified design, improved manufacturing, lower power, higher integration. We then integrated that back into I7. So I7 will not only be a high performance module, but it will be the most efficient, simple, simple design, streamlined, low co lower cost, lower power, um, high end optical engine that we've ever done. And to your point, they use the same optical front end. They use the same T-Rose, 140 gigabaud, you know, optical laser essentially, right. in both components, just different digital signal processors. So there's this nice, you know, investment cycle that you get where you get to uh, benefit from investing on both sides of the embedded and pluggable spectrum. Fun. Well, uh, thanks for the uh, update, Rob. We'll uh, we'll leave it there for now, and thanks uh, uh, for uh, for being part of this executive spotlight Q and A. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me, and it's great to to do these in person. <laughs> Indeed. The time.